Yo, yeah, so guys, and welcome to episode 19 of the Road to Glory. So, in today's episode, we've got a little bit of icon sniping. I think we maybe talk about one or two icon misses. Uh, and then, basically, this whole episode, I'll be completely honest with you, is talking about Thursday investing and how you guys can Thursday invest and how you guys can use the uh, current team of the week uh, to help you out with Thursday investing. But I will go and give you guys a little tutorial this time because a few people did say, you know, people were asking about the icon filter and how do, I guess, you icon trade. So... Again, I'll show you guys the filter once again. So we're going to go log on. This is my alternative account, just so it doesn't give away, you know, stuff or spoilers for the video. So if we could load in right now, that would be brilliant. But uh, yeah, icon trading again is when you, when personally I trade with icons worth over 900k. I ever started doing a lot of research in some cheaper icons, you'll be happy to know. But uh, yeah, you basically just trade with expensive icons. So the filter, you head over to your squad. You then press R1 to go to the transfer market. And I always throw a minimum buy now at 900k. You then throw a maximum buy now of however many coins you have. Let's say I've got 2 million. Then going to head over to League's Icons. And we're going to go and scroll all the way here to Icons. I now, as I say, have a price sheet. Now, this isn't a price sheet, but this is, let's say, an example. So, let's say SEN, I know sales for 999. I'm going to work out tax on that 50k and say, okay. Well, then I'll go and buy SEN for 920, which is the price I actually do go and buy an SEN for. Um, and that's kind of how I know what sales on uh, for the price sheet. So then I have this filter right now, and by pressing L down, uh, pressing down, a lot of people also may wonder, why do I use this over the trans market? Uh, it, this process is past pages, way, way faster than the trans market, but I'm going to go press triangle to search, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the right stick and just hold it down, it's going to scroll through the pages, well, extremely, extremely fast, I mean, what's it taking, like, one page to get there? I think the market might be a little bit glitch, it's going to take me to the fifth or ninth minute, when there's no deal, I'm going to back out, search again. Let's say you just want to keep doing this over and over again. Yeah, the market seems a little bit glitched at the moment. But, uh, yeah, basically we do over and over again. And I say, because you already know what the prices are, because you've got them all written down, as soon as a car pops up, you know, an SEM pops up under 920, or a CACA pops under 950, something like that, I'm going to go and buy it. And I say you just do that over and over and over again, and basically do some 5th and 9th minute sniping. But there's a little intro into how I'm doing icon trading in the video. But, uh, yeah, enjoy the, uh, enjoy the episode. So, to start today's video... Mr. R9 has gone and sold on. Now, we bought R9 last episode for 2.12 million. And now we sold on for 2.310 million. Which means we've made a very nice 70, uh, 75k on Mr. R9. So, uh, yeah, lovely. Top of that, we basically sold a bunch of players there in the club. Uh, so, nothing interesting there. That guy would have been bought for about 600 or under. Um, yeah, that's about it. That's all she wrote. So, not bad. Start off the episode with 3.6 million a trade. We have a game probably going to be doing lots and lots and lots of icon trading. So, should be decent. Uh, obviously, we'll go and sell probably a few things at the club because we've got a bit of excess room. But, yeah, should be a good day. Start off with a nice little R9 overnight sale. So, we've just going to go ourselves our first deal of the day. Uh, it's taken a few hours, but, uh, you know, eventually we got it. We missed a Balak for a meal, which I actually held off going for, but I probably could have made like 20k profit on it. But, uh, yeah, I've got to go and sell Sadorf for Sadorf. I say to buy for anything under 1 million 90. So, we've managed to get this one for um, 1 mil and 85, which is good. On top of that, he's fresh. Fresh is obviously uh, quite nice. And Sadorf, my sale price is if I want to sell him fast, I'll sell him for 1,170. If I want to sell him slowly, I go in for 1.2. Bear in mind, um, I've still got 2.5 mil. Uh, we might go for, I think we're going to go for 1, 2. Especially on top of that, he's also fresh. So, yeah, we're going to go list him up right now for 1.2 mil. Uh, profit on this is going to be 1.2 mil, so 60k tax, so that takes us up to, uh, if I'm not wrong, 75k. I might, I don't know, I might sell it on, but then I don't mind having the coins, because I do trade with a lot of players between like 1 to 2 mil, so I don't madly need more coins, because we're still sitting on about 2.5 million off selling this. Yeah, I think I'm going to try, I'd try 1.2, if we can't sell it, we'll load it down to about 170, but yeah, if I'm not wrong, 60k tax takes us to 1, uh, 1125, so... Yeah, 75k profit on the Clarence Sadoff should be a good little deal. So I've just made quite a risky buy right now. Uh, and that's Hullet. Hullet is actually going right now for about 120k more than he normally goes for. But, um, what is it? But right now he is very, very inflated. Now, again, it honestly could be weakening, but he's up a lot right now. But, yeah, basically he's taking a bit of a risk. Now, Hullet, I normally see sell for about 1.1 mil, 1.2 mil. And we've actually gone to buy him for 1.17 but right now, as I say, he is very inflated. So I'm going to try and get a really fast flip on him because I've literally just seen one. I don't know if I've got any of my transfers right now. I've seen one just sell for 1, 1, was it 1, 2, 70. So uh, I don't know if any are right here. There you go. There's one that I sold on right there for 1, 2, 70, which is pretty mad. Any others we got for examples? No, but uh, at the moment, he's basically going for a lot, lot more. So we will try and flip him very, very fast because it might just be a, you know, him. he's up 
at the moment and then he'll crash back down but yeah i'm gonna be taking a bit of a punt on him just because at the moment he is going for a lot more now hopefully i don't know we're going to get undercut no i don't all right i'm gonna go and try and probably send for like one two fifty which as i say is a fair bit cheaper than what i know he's going for let me just make sure let me just see what one two fifty profits me one two fifty so tax on this is gonna be what like 60k hmm <laughs> Uh, tax is 60k, which would not really leave me too much money. I think I'd have to go 1 to 70. Uh, again, it's, it's a risky buy, um, but it's just due to what he's been going for today. I don't think it's uh, too bad. So, 30k on that. It's like 24k profit. Uh, I think we'll do. I think we'll go for this right here. But yeah, I say very risky buy. I uh, probably wouldn't normally go for it, but uh, just because he's so inflated right now. Um, well, and you know, he's been going for a lot. Literally all morning, he's been super expensive. So. We're, uh, we're going to be going with uh, probably that and take like 20k profit. And I'm a very happy man because about half an hour, Helen's gone and sold on. Uh, and we've also sold a Vieira, so that's two icon deals. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we managed to make it, what is it, 21k on the thing on the Hullet, if, if I can find out. Yeah, on the Hullet, we managed to make ourselves uh, 21k, so not bad after tax. Very, very risky. I'll be honest, I hated holding on to him, and I'm very, very happy he sold fast. But yeah. Um, yeah, very, uh, very happy man that he sold on, but uh, again, like, uh, very ballsy. You know, I, I didn't like it because my normal buy price for Hullet, right, is one million and fifty. I'm going for one point one seven six. That's like one hundred twenty-seven k more. So if he like crashed down, you know, we would have been, uh, we would have been absolutely screwed because we could have lost like a hundred k. That's the amount of money I've probably made in, you know, well, probably today as such. But yeah, I'll take a hurlet selling on. That's uh, always nice. Still selling on the uh, Seidorf. I don't quite know what his price is looking like. But yeah, I'll take the 26k on uh, hurlet. Very risky, but again, you know, no risk. No, well, I mean, there is reward in no risk. But, you know, like, risk it for a chocolate biscuit. Why not? So I know that hasn't been too much in this video. But uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, take this opportunity, I guess, to uh, talk about Louis Thursday flipping. Now, I'm basically going to be investing about 4 million coins. I'm going to buy it all tonight and go and flip it about midday tomorrow. So, the players that I'm buying are going to be uh, both Laporte and Thiago Silva. I will buy a few more Thiago Silvas, but uh, I will go probably about 70% in the Laporte and 30 in Thiago Silva. Uh, now, my buy price for Laporte is going to be 52k for a any card and 55k for a shadow. And Thiago Silva is silver in 63k for any card and 65 for a shadow. Why am I doing this? Um, and that's because Shadow is like a 5k chem star, so it's cheaper to people to go and buy a Shadow card than to go and, um, sorry, buy a player with Shadow, then go and buy the player and then apply Shadow. On top of that, when there's loads of packs open tomorrow and maybe Laporte drops, these will all come out as fresh and not with Shadow, therefore meaning Shadow is going to get flooded anywhere near as much as Basics. So we're going to be talking about why these two players. Now, as you guys all know, on a Thursday, there are a few sets of awards. We've got Division Rivals. And we've got foot champs. But the most important thing is these is people taking untradeable in division rivals and people getting their player picks in foot champs. Because these both these rewards are untradeable and as a result will give you potentially some really, really good untradeable players that you will want to go and put in your teams. Now of course the red player picks you get two to two to five players, uh, depending how good you are at the game. Now, obviously who are the who are gonna be in the red player picks, so that's gonna be the current team of the week. So what you can do is you can look at the current team of the week, and this is personally what I do, is I look at the team we can go, okay, when someone gets one of these players as a red player pick, or they get them as division rival rewards, who are they going to go and adapt their team round? Who is good enough for someone to go and change their team round? Now, I would argue the players that people could pack and would, be, and would you know, again, you don't want to be going like a Duffy, because someone could get a red Duffy, they're not going to either put them in their team or change their team round. And then you could also argue maybe someone like... I don't know, someone like uh, Malik as this guy. You could say he's good enough, but are people really going to go and adapt the whole team around packing in? Maybe. But the players that I would argue in the current team of the week that people would go and change their team around if they get a red player pick of would be probably Lewandowski, Gundogan, Digne, Pjanic, Wijnaldum, Akuna, maybe, uh, and Navas. And Navas, I'd say. Uh, the strongest of these being probably Digne, because um, obviously he's quite a demanded player. Wijnaldum, which would be decent. And maybe Navas, a uh, little, little bit of a far stretch, but um, yeah, those are the players I basically picked out. Now, when you think about red player picks, personally how I look at it is I don't look at it as rating, because I don't believe you have the same chance getting Wijnaldum as you do Gundogan. You don't have the same chance getting, or you don't have a, I think you have a worse chance getting Wijnaldum than Pjanic. How I think EA do it is they tier the players. So top tier players would be like Lewandowski, Kane, Wijnaldum, that's probably it. 
Mid-tier players are probably Digne, Pjanic, Gundogan, um, I don't know, maybe Schmeichel, Navas. And then bottom tier is everyone else. And what EA does as a result is gives you a mixture of those depending how uh, obviously well you do. So uh, yeah, so back underway are the players that people are going to build their teams around. I've gone and personally gone for um, Digne um, because with Digne there are a lot of centimids that link up with him like Ndombele and uh, Suzuko. But the problem with what I have with centimids that link up to Digne is this basically what you want to be looking, sorry, is you want to be looking for strong links and good links that are going to basically, people are going to be using to link up with these red players. So Digne, to get Digne into your team, you're probably going to be using some strong links unless you're using him in a Premier Prem team. Now, again, a lot of his strong links are actually French and mids. You've got Kante, you've got Pogba, you've got, you know, everyone under the sun, you've got Endon Bele, you've got Suzuko. But the problem with going with some of the centre mids is you've got Gundogan and Ronaldo in the current team of the week. Which means if someone gets, and they got, and you got McGinn. Which means if someone gets Gundogan, one Adam, or McGinn, this means that they could be replacing their Premier League centre mids, and therefore you can see Premier League, Premier League centre mids drop this week. Especially very popular ones, if they get a red player pick, that's going to replace them. So I would stay away from centre mids. As a result, your only real links are going to be left wings and left, uh, and centre backs linking up to Digne. Now, we, you could go left wings with uh, Martial, but I personally believe... People are more likely to adapt the defence for a left or right back and, you know, maybe they'll attack their attack for a uh, striker. So then I'd go and look at French links to, um, I'd go and look at French links to Digne. Now, his only real links are going to be Laporte. And I'll be honest with you, it's only really Laporte. But that's good. That's good that it's only Laporte because that means when people are linking him in their teams, they're going to be using Laporte. So that is where our first investment has come in. Also, one thing I'd like to say, Laporte will get a strong link with Gundogan. Not as impressive because... Uh, centre mids, their best link investments are normally left and right backs, whereas again, left and right backs, best link investments are normally centre backs. So uh, that is where Laporte has come from. Again, Digne, people get him as a red card, they want to link him in their team, there's a lack of links, Laporte should do well. And then you can look at Acuna, but even the weak links to Acuna, there are no good league and centre backs and there's no good Argentinian centre backs. The only argument, well, the only player you could say with Acuna would be uh, Bruno Fernandes, but you don't really want to go play to like 20k or below. Uh, I'll walk you through a few other things you could go on. Could go inform Trent for Wijnaldum, but again, I think Wijnaldum is going to be very hard to pull. So I don't think um, inform Trent is the best value for money. You could also say, say inform Gomez. You also do want to keep these players to being, again, 40, 50k players, or ideally informs. Could say inform Gomez, but then I kind of look at it like, are you going to go and buy a 140k player just to fit him in? Also, people are unlikely to use a pattern to fit him in. Harry Kane, I'd argue, isn't really going to be making it into people's teams. He's not, you know, I, I don't play the game, but I've been told disgustingly that he's not meta whatsoever. Lewandowski, Lewandowski brilliant, apart from that Bundesliga POTM is likely to come Thursday or Friday. And as a result, um, some of his link investments may go down. Like, you know, so there's a Coutinho and Coutinho gets POTM left wing. That'll bring down all left wings. And the other problem with Lewandowski is he has way too many links. He's got himself Perisic, he's got himself Coutinho, he's got himself Gnabry, he's got himself Thiago, and he's got himself Muller. So there's so, so many links to Lewandowski. And then on top of that, like I said, we were now doing, he's going to be such a top tier player that um, that I really, really don't think he's going to be that much. Pjanic, again, you know, you've got Alexandro, which is okay, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't madly, madly rate him. And uh, yeah, it basically leaves us with Schmeichel. Schmeichel doesn't have any good links unless you want to buy Wes Morgan. And then that leaves us with Navas. Now, Navas, again, people would argue wouldn't madly be used. He's a goalkeeper. But you go and look at Navas' links. Now, you could argue that Kimpembe would be good, but again, strong links are normally pretty, pretty naff for it. So, your players right here are Thiago Silva or Marquinhos. Again, ideally, you know, 20k is not ideal, so we're going to be going here with Thiago Silva. Thiago Silva is also not very inflated, which makes him even, uh, well, a very risk-free investment. You can see right there, 20k. Um, I think I'm buying what mine for, 63 to 65k, so it's, uh, it's you know, relatively risk-free. Um... I'll be honest, I don't really get why T.I. Silva is used for weakening me, but I guess pace isn't really everything. So that's kind of what I've gone with him. But I've gone with a 70-30 uh, split uh, with 70% Laporte and 30% um, Thiago Silva's. But hopefully this has gone and kind of shown you guys how um, how to kind of go, I guess, prep on a Thursday. Kind of walk to you through all my you know thought processes of, of uh, stuff. Last week, I guess I'll show you what I bought last week. Last week, I went and got um, loads of, uh, what's it called, Inform Malins. Obviously, you know, Berwing really has one link to Malin. He was going to be... He was quite a cheap player, so he's going to make it into a lot of player picks. So that would have been good. I also went and bought loads of inform Lenglets to link up with some Mado. Uh, and Lenglet also linked up to Lucas Hernandez, which was decent. 
Uh, and yeah, that's all she wrote. So there's uh, there's a bunch of investments I went with this, well last week, and uh, they did very well. So hopefully putting four million coins into these would be good. Again, the reason I don't mind putting four million coins is because I literally get in this evening, probably sell them by midday, and then can do icon trading for the rest of the day. Which progress with icon trading, uh, you guys will be happy to see, is that we are learning a lot, a lot more prices. So if I can get this to pop up right now. We've got this list right here, and what I'm starting to do is, this is just my, this is basically, I write down every single price that they sell for. So Ronaldinho, as I've tried to do, sell for 1,050,000, 1,305, it would actually probably be 1,305, 1,305, and 1,310. And I've actually started to kind of cover more players, because then you don't have to watch me trade with only expensive players. We've got ourselves Giggs now, Baggio, uh, Skulls, Vieri, Keane, and then I've also gone with Inform Mane, Inform De Bruyne, Inform Mertens, uh, Fernand, Ferdinand, Campbell, Poyo, Coman, Vieira, Costa, Keane. So, do expect me to trade with uh, some cheaper icons um, tomorrow, which should be uh, all good fun. But that's kind of weird. I know this has been a long intro, but there hasn't been too much content in today's video. So, hopefully, this has gone and, I guess, help you guys for the future weeks. I understand this will come out probably, you know, just before awards. It's not madly useful. But, uh, again, it's just how I, you know, run the content of the video. So, thank you very much for watching, I believe, episode 19. I think today we're probably up, like, 100k, so... Only on about 4.3 mil. But yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in a brand new video.